This video is made possible by my patrons on Patreon. Hello everyone, my name is Ziamaro and welcome to Battlebright Sage. So today we've been treated to a new dev blog from Stunlock. For those of you who were hoping for more info on Battle Royale, this isn't it unfortunately. There is however a little hint that we might see some beta signups soon. For now though, we're looking at some arena changes. So mostly this blog is a teaser of what's to come in the Season 3 patch. Season 2 ends a week today, so we should see a lot of the stuff that's detailed in the blog next week. There'll almost certainly be changes to specific champions, but what we've got today are more general changes, and they're actually pretty huge. So first off, there will be no more solo queue 2v2. If you like playing 2v2 with a friend, don't worry, this doesn't affect you. You'll still be able to play 2v2 as a pre-made. However, moving Moving forward, you won't be able to queue for 2v2 in solo queue. The reasons for these decisions are a little bit shrouded in sugarcoating. They say that some people are climbing faster in 2v2, and because of the leaderboards that we now have, people will get into the top 200 and feel like they have to continue playing 2v2, even if they like 3v3 as well. They also say that the game is balanced for 3v3 and gives the game a more clear focus on which mode to balance for. Honestly, I think all of this is just a nice way of saying that some people cheese their way into the leaderboards in 2v2 because it's not as well balanced. Now, I know this will be quite a polarizing decision. Some people will be pleased about this. It will mean shorter queue times for solo queue because the population is no longer split between two modes. Others will not be so happy if 2v2 is the only mode they play. My personal opinion on the matter, I think the game is better balanced in 3v3. There are some champions who just plain suck in 2v2, while others are way stronger than they should be. 2v2 is heavily comp dependent compared to 3v3. And to be perfectly honest, if you like 2v2, you can still play it in a pre-made. At least in a pre-made you can put together a viable 2's comp and play against others who've also picked a viable comp. That's just my opinion of course, let me know what you guys think down below. I think the removal of 2's will be the most divisive change, but there are more changes that will seriously shake up the meta too. First, the round time has been reduced to 90 seconds. Right now, the round time is 2 minutes, and remember that the round timer is a countdown to when the death vortex starts coming in. So it will now come in 30 seconds sooner than it did before. I think the main purpose of this is to reduce the effectiveness of stall comps, and to prevent a 2v3 lasting longer than it should. In 3v3, the team that gets the first kill wins probably 90% of the time. Yes, comebacks happen, we've all had clutch situations like that, but in most rounds, the team that gets the first kill wins. And one problem you see all too often is players stalling for time even if they can't win. This change forces people to take more affirmative actions. It doesn't stop clutch situations from happening, but it does reduce the chance that you'll be chasing a solo croak around for over a minute. It's not fun to play against that and it's not fun to watch either. Besides, the average round time in BPL is 93 seconds across all regions, so with the new round timer the game will usually end 3 seconds after the death vortex starts to come in anyway. So for most rounds you won't even see a difference. All in all, I think it'll make much more exciting games. Next up, we have Support M2 cooldowns. This is an interesting change. For those of you who don't know, right now, supports who heal with Mouse 2 get a cooldown reduction on their heals for each ally in range. This is basically a way of balancing healing output between 1v1s, 2v2s, and 3v3s. The less allies you have, the less often you can heal. It's actually quite a smart mechanic. One issue with this method is that it adds to the 3v2 momentum that teams can get. If you eliminate an enemy DPS, their support now has longer cooldowns on their heals than your team does. It makes coming back from a 2v3 much harder. Another issue is that your team has to be in range. This means if you have one person who is really far from the support, the support now has longer healing cooldowns. Most of the time you'll be in range to benefit from it, but it does limit tactics unnecessarily. For example, you can have a Lucy and Shifu comp where Lucy and the ranged DPS stick together, while Shifu goes way into the enemy backline while being supported by the infinite range Lucy barriers. It's a cool strategy, but Lucy will have longer healing cooldowns when you do this. Like I say, it doesn't happen often, but it's an unnecessary limitation. Starting in Season 3, there will be some changes to address both of these issues. 
Firstly, healing cooldowns will be based on the total number of players in the game, which includes your opponent, and the range will be infinite, so you don't even have to be near each other to benefit from this. So what this means is that when a player is eliminated on either side, both supports will have equally increased healing cooldowns. I think this will reduce the impact of the 3v2 advantage somewhat. It seems like a much more fair way to do it, and the range change will be great for opening up more strategies. Honestly, 90% of the time the range thing will make no difference, but it's nice to have this limitation removed. If you're playing Paloma, Xander or Pestilus, there's no change for you, so don't worry about it. Now, let's look at the final bit of information we've been given. Weaken changes. Now, this one comes as no surprise to me. Right now, weaken effects stack additively. So if you apply a 50% weaken on top of another 50% weaken, that player will do zero damage. Honestly, it wasn't until Red Canids abused the crap out of it that this feature became apparent. But needless to say, weaken stacking is pretty much the meta strategy right now if you want to have an easy time. Moving forward, weaken effects will stack multiplicatively. So a 50% weaken on top of a 50% weaken will reduce the target's damage by 75% instead of 100%. The double 50% weaken is just an example that they gave but it's not really something that you'll see in a real game. More realistically it will be something like Thorns plus Dehydration plus Jamong Trap. Additively, these would reduce the target's damage output by 80%. Multiplicatively, it'll reduce the damage by 62%. And when you think that Jamong's Trap alone would reduce damage output by 50%, it makes weakened stacking look a lot less attractive. So all in all, I think these changes are going to lead to shorter queue times and less rounds that just get stalled out in solo queue. Most of the time, you won't really notice the difference with the round time and healing changes, but for those rare occasions, where teams just seem to want to stall things as long as possible, you'll really appreciate these changes. I'm expecting most of the comments to be about the removal of 2v2 in solo queue, but do let me know what you think of the other changes too. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please feel free to subscribe for more Battle Right guides, news, and discussion. If you'd like to help support the channel and get some unique rewards, then head over to patreon.com slash battlerightsage. And don't forget to check out twitch.tv slash battlerightsage. Until next time, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.